Hi everyone, Tim from Classic Register here. I thought we'd take the opportunity to do a short video on the Leyland Mini 1275 LS. This was a car produced in 1978 by Leyland Australia. It was the last of the Australian Minis other than the Mini Moke which continued to be produced into the 1980s. 1275 LS was intended to be a long running model. Uh, it ended up being a run out model of course as Leyland Australia closed up shop. Cars are available in just two colours, Nugget Gold as seen here and Hi Ho Silver. There are about 800 of them produced, or roughly 800, and half of those were in silver, half of those were in gold. So the intention of this video is to go through the various features of these cars and explain how to identify a genuine one. We go through the exterior features, the interior features, as well as the mechanical features, and of course the all important codes you need to be looking for and this is intended to complement our written identification guide of these cars which you can see on screen now. Okay, starting off at the front of the car here, now the 1275 LS will have the LS badging. What I've done here actually with this car is installed a 998 LS grille and you can see a 998 LS over there with the fog light grille. A lot of people make this modification to the 1275 LS and I found one of these grills on eBay so I've put it in. Originally, most of the 1275 LS cars did not actually have fog lights. I have heard from a few people that uh, they believe their car was fitted from the dealer uh, with fog lights. It's potential, uh, but the vast majority of 1275 LS cars did not have the fog lights. This gold car originally didn't. We've got the other original grille for it, um, but essentially they had this standard grille with the LS badge. Now, the LS badge is meant to be in red. This car has been modified at some point in the past, and it's got blue badging. Um, but we'll bring that back to original in future. Another feature is the underwriters. All the LS's had underwriter uh, bumper bars here at the front. Uh, coming over the front of the car. The aerial is another unique feature. Not necessarily unique to the LS. Um, also used on, on other models and with an optional radio. Uh, but that's the style of antenna you'll be looking at there. Having a look at the side of the car now. The 1275 LS was fitted with uh, 12 by 5 inch wheels. Uh, these were brought over from Europe and they're the same wheel essentially as what was applied to the 1275 GT. Now the reason the LS was fitted, the 1275 LS was fitted with 12 inch wheels was because it was fitted at the front with 8.4 inch disc brakes. Now the 8.4 inch disc brakes would not fit into the 10 inch rims that they'd applied to all other minis. Uh, the 1275 LS is the only Australian Mini that was fitted with 12 inch wheels from the factory. And as we get closer, I'll look, I'll show you on the gold car, because these are more original hubcaps. We've got some different center caps on, on the one in the silver car. But these are the original wheels with the Leyland center caps on them. These are plastic covers on top, and the unique wheel nuts they have that small plastic um, washers underneath them. Originally, there were also rubber plastic caps that went on top of these. Of course, they tended to fall off the cars over time. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have a set of them, but we'll, we'll look to get them as we bring this car back to original in future. Um, more features of the side of the car. The flares. Now, these flares are the same type that were applied to uh, many other Layla Minis in Australia. Uh, the Mini S, the Mini GT. They're the same flares. Uh, plastic flares. Uh, the LS was finished in a very thick chrome strip. As you can see, um, you can see the backing plate, the flare backing plates, which were um, applied to the LS and other cars, other Leyland Minis. Uh, these are spot welded on, metal under panels, and then the plastic flare went over the top and finished with the chrome strip, which you can see on the silver car there. Now, not applied to the gold car yet is the uh, the side stripes. Uh, these were these were standard as well and said 1275 LS at the back there, as you can see. Just running down the side of the car, which I think look great. Uh, we'll have to get a set for the gold car. We've got to do some paint work and body work before we get onto that. Okay, from the back of the cars, you can see a couple of differences. Obviously, unique to the 1275 LS is the 1275 LS badging at the rear, which you can see on both cars here. Another thing you'll notice is on the rear windscreens of these cars. They are fitted with uh, demisting elements running through the windscreen. 
Uh, that was standard on the LS, both the 998 and 1275 LS had these features. Uh, this car's got further tinted windows. There is a slight green tint to the LS windows. You can probably see it in the sun there. Uh, Most of the minis were not tinted at all, uh, but the LS came with slightly tinted windows. This car has um, a far darker tinting, which was done aftermarket. So just while we're still outside the car, it's probably a good opportunity to show you guys where to look for rust. Unfortunately, the late model Leyland Minis were very, very poorly rust-proofed. And unless they're really well looked after, you're going to generally find uh, rust in some fairly common places. Uh, one of the major places you'll find it is just below, you know, below the A-pillar in front of the door. Uh, the sills as well. Along the sills, there's often quite a lot of rust down here. You can see a few holes that have come up in this one here. Uh, we've got sills made for this car, which we're going to be installing at some point. Coming to the rear of the car, and for some reason, uh, it often happens here under the windows as well. Uh, there's often quite a bit of rust that comes up there. Uh, I believe it, a lot of water is probably held behind the window rubber, and uh, that causes that to, that to start rusting. Uh, standard with a lot of minis, of course, is the rear beaver panel. This one's not too bad. It's pretty solid, uh, but it's always best to take off the bumper bar and make sure that you deal with any rust that's occurring. A bit had started there in the seam. Uh, which we started to take care of and clean up uh, and that's why I've got the bumper off this car to try and just stop it from deteriorating any further. Um, roof line of course, it's always an issue with some minis, you can get rust in the corners, this one's pretty good uh, thankfully. Under the chrome strips of the doors, we've got a bit of an issue here, some rust spots, uh, thankfully not too bad, we should be able to patch it up pretty well. But a good example of what can happen to the sills is down here. This panel here is actually okay, you know, it's, it's not going to be too difficult to repair. Uh, but as I said, we have new sills for this car, which will be going in, uh, new side sills. The rear of the car is actually okay, it's just the front, we, we found rust there. Uh, you may also find it just below the windscreen. That's another common spot for minis, just to, to gather water and start rusting in that corner there. Um, other than that, we can show you a few other spots from inside the car and the floor pans and things where you might find issues. Uh, but as I said, it's generally, they, they weren't rust proofed too well, these cars. And uh, unfortunately, that means that there's generally a few repairs necessary. You can see a lot of bubbling going on down there in front of the door on the silver one. Um, it's probably been 15, 20 years since this car was restored. And despite getting a two pack paint job um, from the previous owner, it's, it's obviously uh, still an issue. Moving on to some of the interior features now. The gold cars were fitted with a brown sort of corduroy style cloth and you can probably see it here in the video with these ridges that run along. This material is extremely hard to find, I've never been able to find it. I had to get the base of the driver's seat done and I just had it done in the matching colour but I could not find the corduroy style finish for it unfortunately. Uh, so that's the trim that applies to the gold 1275 LS. Um, they've also got cream door cards, you can see an example of the door cards style uh, with the back panel there and um, that's the colour it was, the cream and obviously the seats uh, are, are backed in that vinyl as well. They just had black carpets. Uh, the floors in this car are actually not too bad. I've rust proofed them as much as I can. Obviously the sills we showed you on the outside need doing in this car. Um, but yeah, highly recommend it if, you, if you're having a look at one of these cars, you check the floors. It's a, it's a big area where they can go um, and have issues. Uh, so onto the dashboard, the 1275 LS was fitted with a, a radio and single speaker in the middle. Uh, you have a switch here, which is different than the standalone means. This is for the rear screen, the rear, rear demister. Uh, it switches on and off. The 998 LS has an additional switch here for the fog lights, and if a 1275 LS was fitted with fog lights, I presume, it would also have a second switch there, but as I said, that's that's particularly rare um, for that to be a, a dealer or factory installed item on a 1275 LS. Moving a bit further over here and looking at the steering wheel, this is the Formula GT wheel that the 1275 LS had on it, and you can probably just make that out from the original text down there, Formula GT, apologies for the focus. Uh, it's quite a nice wheel, it's a very big wheel. Um, a lot of these have been replaced uh, by other later sports wheels, of course. Uh, you've got the triple gauge ga dash here, and 
Being a 77, 78 model car, the 1275 less was 1978 only. Uh, we had the brake fail lamp here and the handbrake warning lamp at the top as well. Um, that was an Australian design rules item that, um, that required those. We've got the door cards off the car at the moment. Um, so, can't show you those. We had the rear seat partially retrimmed again just with the flat fabric, flat brown fabric. Unfortunately, it was in quite bad condition. Uh, so, we found what we could. Uh, to redo that. It is a new headlining, but it does need to be fixed up a bit. Obviously, it's not been professionally installed yet. Um, that's the original carpet, and we'll have to uh, install some new carpet and underlay at the front front of the car. So that's the gold LS interior. Unfortunately, the 1275 LS that we have here does not have an original interior in it. It's got a modified uh, interior from the previous owner. They put a Rover-style dash in it, which looks great, um, and some modern seats. Uh, so, well, that actually, they are, they are the original 1275 seats, LS seats that have been retrimmed, uh, but we have an original pair that goes in this. Um, the 1275 LS in high host silver came with red seat fronts and black interior, generally except the roof lining, um, which, was, which was cream. Uh, we can see the side panels in there black panels as opposed to the cream in the 1275 LS and when door cards there are they're, they're actually modified door cards they're not original but I can show you the interior of another LS we have over here which is very similar to the 1275 LS in terms of its interior this is a high ho silver 998 LS of 1977 these are the style of door cards and trim that you'll see on a high ho silver 1275 LS exactly the same as the 998 and there's an example of the red trim on black vinyl that you'll see in those cars too. So that's probably a good example of how they look. Let's see if I can pull this seat forward a bit for you so you can see in the back. Red trim and then of course black vinyl. Roof lining's out of this car at the moment so ignore that. Alright, we'll move around and start to have a look at the different features inside the engine bay, including some of the codes. Moving inside the engine bay now, one of the most important things you want to look at in terms of identifying these cars is the chassis compliance plate. Chassis compliance plate is on the inner mud guard on the driver's side, and you want to look for the chassis prefix. Underneath the Leyland Mini here, you'll see XNFAD18Y, followed by a unique chassis number. That prefix is the 1275 LS prefix. It's unique to the 1275 LS. In terms of production date, 1275 LS were always built in 1978, and you'll have that date at the bottom left of the compliance plate. Moving over the other side of the engine bay, that number that you saw on the plate there is also stamped and should match the number that you find on the inner mud guard above the radiator, or the radiator shroud here. You'll see the code XNFAD18Y, followed by the unique chassis number. Another important number inside the engine bay to check if you're looking at purchasing a 1275 LS or determining its authenticity is the engine number. Now the engine number is located at the top of the engine block where the head meets the block on the passenger side. You can see this flat area here that sticks out and the number is stamped into it. Now the 1275 LS engine number is, has the same prefix as the 1275 Californian Moke number and that prefix is 12H902. Uh, that's the number we've seen on of the vast majority of 1275 LS cars. We've probably got engine number, number details for around 30 or 40 of the cars we've collected on the register and every single one of those cars has the 12H902 prefix. Um, so we can fairly confidently conclude that that is the correct prefix for these cars. Looking at the other mechanical features, you've obviously got the pollution gear. These are pollution compliant engines uh, that were brought in from Europe. Um, 1.5 inch SU carburetor as opposed to the 1.25 inch which was on the 998 LS. On the 1275 LS you've also got a larger core radiator known as the tropical radiator which was applied to the Californian 1275 Mokes as well. Looking inside the trunk of the 1275 LS, there is a major difference. The 1275 was fitted with the long range tank, details of which we've put in the written ID guide. Uh, a lot more capacity than the original tank and really helps with, um, with range of course. 
Uh, we don't have an example here, but originally uh, there's a boot mat that sits and unfolds over the boot lid. Uh, just, just a vinyl mat with some Hesham underlining. That was original to the 1275 LS. Uh, a lot of people obviously modify the cars and put in uh, the boot boards, which you can see in this 1275 LS here. Someone's put a boot board in, but originally it was just a vinyl mat with Hessian, Hessian underlining that sort of folded out and also lay over the, um, the back of the boot lid. And again, here you can see the long range tank. To show you the difference between that tank, I'll take you around to a 998 LS and just show you the size difference. So there you are, you can see how it sort of comes and ends about halfway compared to the width of the 1275 LS tank. A bit less storage space in the boot, but not a big deal. So there are many more features of these cars, and we go into greater detail within the identification guides. Um, items such as the wing mirrors, the standard wing mirrors, for example, the LS was only fitted with uh, one driver's side wing mirror originally, and that's the style they were fitted with. A lot of people fit them with bullet mirrors and things now, um, but that was, the, that was the original style. They weren't fitted with a passenger mirror, but of course it's handy to have, and a lot of people install them as well. Things like these uh, window louvers as well are often very popular uh, to fit, and we've managed to get a couple of those uh, to fit to our cars as traditional 70s modifications. Um, if you want any further details on these cars, have a look at our ID guide. Have a look at the register on classicregister.com. Uh, we've got about 40 cars on there now on that particular register. If you've got one, we'd love you to add yours, add your details, add the history of the car, uh, so we can keep track of these. There are only 800 built, and it'd be great to get your details on there. Alright guys, thanks for watching uh, this guide to the 1275 LS. Uh, if you have any further information you think could be useful for the ID guide, the written ID guide, or to add to this video, uh, just send us a message or get in contact with us through our website and we'll update those. Thanks very much.